Let's give it up one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for the McEwen University Big Band. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, if you are able, I would ask that you please rise. At this time, I am pleased to introduce this afternoon's mace bearer, Rose Clancy, an instructional assistant in the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communication. Ms. Clancy is carrying the university's mace, which was donated to the university in 1997 by its namesake, Dr. Grant McEwen, and became the official mace in 2008. It is especially meaningful to the university as it was hand carved by Dr. McEwen. Further information on the mace and other convocation traditions can be found in the convocation program. I ask that you please remain standing now for the academic processional.
graduands, distinguished guests, members of the stage party, faculty, staff, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Sekulich, University Registrar and Marshal of Convocation. I begin our ceremony today by recognizing that we are gathered on the traditional lands and waters of diverse Indigenous peoples. Please remain standing and in respect, remove all hats except mortar boards for the singing of our national anthem led by Ms. Haley Tomich. Thank you, Ms. Tomich. Please be seated. I declare McEwen University Convocation open. It is intended to honor our 2016 graduates, and we are honored to have you present with us on this occasion. The word convocation comes from the Latin word convoco, which means to call together by summons. It is traditionally used in connection with an ecclesiastical or academic gathering. Convocations are called for the conferring of degrees, diplomas, certificates, for special announcements, and for the recognition of outstanding achievement. So it is today that we call colleagues and friends together to honor McEwen University's graduates and award recipients for spring 2016 convocation. And now, I'd like to call upon the student member of our Board of Governors, Ms. Danica McConnell, to read the McEwen University invocation. Through learning, we flourish and help others to flourish. We stand here today on the brink of important change for ourselves and for the world. Inspired by the past, we now step forward to transform the future. Engaging with others, we cherish the diversity of experience within our communities and ourselves. Through perseverance, we excel. Through compassion, we connect. Through creativity, we thrive. Through knowledge, we grow. Through all of this and more, let us forge a legacy to nurture, to inspire, to endure. Moved by this spirit, strong in our knowledge, we move out into the world with open arms, open mind, and open heart. We pledge to leave the world better than we found it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McConnell. I will now introduce members of the stage party, and I would ask members of the stage party to please remain standing once you've been called upon. And audience, I would ask that you please hold your applause until all members 
have been introduced. I would like to start with our Board of Governors Chair, John Day, President Dr. David Atkinson, Provost and Vice President Academic Dr. John Corlett, and Academic Governance Council Vice Chair, Mr. Chris Hancock. And now would members of our Board of Governors, Vice Presidents and Associate Vice Presidents please rise. Would our special guest, MLA David, David Shepard, representing the Minister of Advanced Education and Government of Alberta, please rise. I now ask the deans and associate deans and members of the university's administration to rise. I would ask representatives of each of our associations, faculty, staff, alumni, and student to please rise. Mace Bearer, convocation speaker, and distinguished guests, please stand and be recognized. Will our distinguished proctor, Gail Barrington Moss, instructor in the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications, along with all faculty and staff of the university, please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your stage party. This is your university. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, you may be seated. I would like to now invite board member John, che, John Day, chair of the board, to bring greetings on behalf of McEwen University's Board of Governors. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon, everyone. As the chair of the Board of Governors, I have the very distinct pleasure of welcoming all of you to McEwen University's Convocation Ceremony. This is a privilege that I look forward to each and every year. There is no greater honor than being able to take part in these ceremonies, which are always in their own way moving and inspirational. I'd like to welcome each member of the platform party, our distinguished guests, including MLA David Shepard, our award re recipients, our faculty and staff, and most importantly, the staff, the uh, class of 2016, and all of your families and friends. I'd also like to acknowledge our fellow board members who are present with us today, Andy Rhodes and Danica McConnell. Today is a day for reflection, for celebration, and excitement as you graduate from the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications. And we're delighted to be able to share this with you. I've been honored to be part of 34 convocations now during my term as board chair and have congratulated over 8,000 students as they've crossed the stage. I appreciate how complex people's lives are and that, for some of you, the journey to this point has, been, has presented unbelievable challenges. You walk, walk across the stage, your stories and your accomplishments will stay with me after my formal association with the university ends. Well, I'm nearing the end of my term and I'd like to look back for a second to 2010 and where my journey started. These were early days in McEwen as a university and its evolution. The board, the administration, the faculty and staff were all anxious to move forward with new buildings, with new degrees and new program offerings. The changes since then have been remarkable. If I take you back 40 some years, uh, McEwen had I think 700 students and comprised 70,000 square feet of space and now has 19,000 students and three million square feet of space, so has doubled its size each year for the last 40 years. One of our goals has been to consolidate our programs at Edmonton City Centre, and we we're just 15 months away from this happening. When the Centre for Arts and Culture opens in September of 17, all of our students will be in the downtown core. The next major project will be within, with the Students Association building led by our very own students. It will be called the SAMU building. A great deal of progress has been made and we're very hopeful that we can break ground in the spring of 2017. While I'm a big proponent of Edmonton's downtown and these new, these new buildings show that the university has been extremely successful at anticipating the needs of our students and what will work for the city of Edmonton. Our degree offerings have evolved as well, matching demand from our students with the needs of Alberta's employers in the public, the private, the not-for-profit, and of course, creative sectors. And we've done this in a measured way, making sure we have capacity that matches interest and need, then growing programs that build on our strengths. 
our bachelor degree programs in communication studies, social work, psychiatric nursing, and music are perfect examples. And we're ready to introduce more, much more. Health promotion, design, fine arts, justice studies, and early childhood education. We know that this approach has paid off. Two years after becoming a university, we gained AUCC designation, the gold standard for Canadian university programs, which puts us on an equal footing with universities across the country. And I want to acknowledge the critical role of our president in going through the AUCC process. He played a key, key role, and his experience and his knowledge were absolutely critical to us having AUCC designation today. Universities are complicated places. Expectations are very high, and it takes a great deal of skill and expertise to guide a university to greatness. The Board of Governors is such an important part of this process. It's critical to have board members who bring very specific expertise to the governance of the institution and reflect the diversity of the faculty, the staff, and the students. I've given some thought to what makes McEwen such a special place. It infects us all. For me, it boils down to relationships. Relationships between the board and the administration, between the faculty and students, and between students themselves. We've worked hard to protect class sizes, and this sets us apart as an undergraduate institution. It creates unique opportunities for you and your professors and instructors to know each other, to learn and grow together, and to develop ties that will endure. Class size is a foundational piece. It's essential to McEwen's success, and one that I hope the next board, chair, and administration will work hard to promote and protect. Our focus is always on the student experience, and with each new initiative, there's one question, only one question. What will this mean to our students? I'll give you an example. As the great new Center for Arts and Communication uh, we realize, being built, we realized that there was going to be a gap between the um, end of the, the west end of the campus and the new Center for Arts and, and Culture being built. So we really, really wanted to build a pedway, but we just didn't have the resources. So we moved things around, we found the money, and now the pedway will be built and uh, it'll be a, a direct walk for anybody from any part of the campus. So we think that's very important for the, the quality of life of the students. So imagine the atmosphere on campus once we integrate our amazing West End Arts community with the rest of the university. To be able to go to a lecture, then hear a jazz performance, a live band, or wander through the latest installation by our visual artists. This will enrich the McEwen experience for all of our students broaden our horizons, and spur creativity in all of our programs. And just as important is the chance to cheer the Griffins. Last month, McEwen became the 17th full member in the Canada West Athletic Conference, and two weeks ago, we were voted in as full members in Canadian inter-university sport. This puts many of our teams in the big leagues right where they belong, and our athletic program is rising to its challenge. Women's basketball had us all on edge of our seats with their incredible year, winning the Canada West Explorer Division regular season championship and making it to the final four. Women's soccer wasn't far behind with a trip to the final six. We all celebrated with them and are looking forward to the next season. When Rogers Place opens this fall, the McEwen hockey program will home, have a home in the community arena, built as part of the new development a home rink for our hockey teams just past the east end of the campus with a sea of maroon and white in the stands. This will be a big deal for McEwen. One thing that I'm often asked is whether I have any advice for graduates. And you can be sure that your time in the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications has given you the, the knowledge you're going to need to succeed. One need look no further than the 2016 Emerge Media Awards to find two of our truly outstanding writers recognized amongst their peers from journalism programs across the country. Two McEwen students out of five finalists. That speaks volumes. Your artists, composers, designers, writers, photographers, journalists, communicators, performers, and more. You're the creative soul of our community, and we're looking forward to watching your progress as you leave McEwen. What will set you apart? In my experience, it boils down to simple things. Showing up every day. Focus on being a good colleague. 
treating everyone with respect and civility, being honest and ethical. It sounds simple, and it is, but there are times when you're going to find it a big challenge to live up to those. My challenge to you is to do it anyway. Make it part of your core values. I can guarantee it's what really matters. Show up. Be a good colleague. Treat people with respect. And hand in hand with this is the reward that comes when you turn your gaze outwards. Look outside your own circle. Explore what your community needs to move forward. And step up to help. I can say with certainty, after many years of volunteering, that you'll gain a richness of experience and the ability to see what's really important in life. This sense of community is what I remember, will remember most about my time on the McEwen University Board of Governors. It makes this institution great. And so many of you are already showing this spirit time and again. I've worked with many teams in my life, and by far the most rewarding experiences are really never individual accomplishments. The memories that last are the team accomplishments. I must say that I've never been on a team of 19,000 people before, but that's exactly how I remember my experience with McEwen over the last six years. We are all team teammates, and I know of no other place like it. This makes McEwen University a special place. Before I close, I'd like to make a couple of comments to some of my colleagues. My colleagues on the Board of Governors, you've been an exemplary board really the very best board I've worked with, with the best mix of skills and commitment to sharing these with the university. The administration, you're an outstanding team dedicated to both academic excellence and effective stewardship of resources. Our president, David Atkinson, has been the catalyst in our academic evolution, for which we are all very grateful. The faculty and staff, one word, simply amazing. McEwen University and our students would not be where we are today without you. I want to single out Margot Batista, our board secretariat, who I've worked with for six years, and I think I'm a little bit of an authority on board secretariats at McEwen, and will say she is the absolute best in the business. And finally, the class of 2016, who represent the very best McEwen University has to offer. The university, all the people on the podium, your family and friends are here because of you. It is your day, and the rest of us are your community ready to cheer you on as you walk across the stage and in the next chapter. I wish each of you great success in your careers and in life. We aren't ending our association with you today. We're evolving it. My hope is you'll be proud alumni and help us to build an even greater future for McEwen University. On behalf of the Board of Governors, congratulations to the class of 2016. Thank you, Board Chair Day. I would like to now call upon MLA David Shepard to provide greetings on behalf of the Minister of Advanced Education and the Government of Alberta. Well, thank you. Well, good afternoon, Dr. Atkinson, members of the Board of Governors, faculty, staff, graduates, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin by acknowledging and respectfully observing that we're gathered here today on the traditional territory of Treaty 6 First Nations. It's a privilege to bring greetings on behalf of Premier Rachel Notley, the Honorable Marlon Schmidt, Minister of Advanced Education, and all of my colleagues with the Government of Alberta. It's an incredible honor to join you all here today on what is a very special day in your lives. In fact, it's a particular honor for me as while I'm an alumni of McEwen, in fact of their music program, having attended from 93 to 95, again in 2001, this is in fact the first McEwen convocation I've had the privilege of attending. <laughs> I, I didn't make it to my graduation. But it's good to close the circle. <clears throat> and as both a musician and a professional communicator, it's a particular honor to join you as graduates of the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications. I have fond memories of my education at McEwen because that's where I first gained the skills that have shaped and empowered my own life. 
In running scales and studying theory, I learned the importance and discipline of mastering core skills and structure. And in learning to improvise and play by ear, I learned how to take a simple idea, elaborate its theme, and how to adapt and be quick on my feet. By playing in bands and ensembles, I learned collaboration, how to engage in creative dialogue, and the chaotic diplomacy of generating and debating new ideas on the fly. And through performance, I gained the confidence to find and refine my thoughts and my voice, and learn to share them with others as I'm honored to have the opportunity to do with you here today. But you know, when I first graduated 31 years ago, I never could have imagined that those skills that I first gained and developed at McEwen University would lead me along such a rich and diverse path of life to land me where I am today. Life often does not go where we expect it to. But if we remember our strengths, develop our skills, and are willing to embrace new challenges and possibilities, it can take you further than you'd ever imagine. So I'm incredibly honored to join you today as you take this next step in your own life's journeys. After the handshakes and hugs, after the photos are taken and the toasts are raised, you'll set out into a province and a world that needs you. It's a difficult world with big challenges far different from those faced by generations before you. But it's also a world full of opportunity where young leaders can step up to find and develop the economic, scientific, social, and creative solutions that our world needs and for which, from which we all will benefit. And there's no more effective tool to have at your disposal in doing so than your education. At any time, and especially in difficult times, access to quality post-secondary education is especially vital. And education is the single most important investment a government and an individual can make. So I'm proud to stand with a government that recognizes that value and has frozen tuition so we can help you maximize your personal investments of time, money, and hard work, the rewards of which you are celebrating today. The great Irish poet William Butler Yeats called education the lighting of a fire. Your education is a fire that you will tan throughout your life, adding the fuel of experience and the oxygen of wisdom. Learning is the foundation of a life well lived, it forms the deep roots of a vibrant community and the best promise pardon me, for a stronger Alberta. The role of education and learning in your, future, in your future is now part of your responsibility as adult Albertans and as citizens of our province. So today, with the love and support of your family, friends, and community, we praise you for the months and years of effort that have led you to this ceremony. And we trust the future to your care. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, MLA David Shepard. I'd like to now call upon McEwen University's president, Dr. David Atkinson, and ask him to address this afternoon's graduates. Number four, eh? Distinguished platform party, members of faculty and staff, ladies and gentlemen, friends of McEwen, and always on this occasion and most important, our graduates. Welcome, welcome to Convocation for the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications for the spring of 2016. Convocation is when we celebrate the achievements of you, our graduates, and pause to reflect on what those accomplishments mean. It's also an event when we recognize those who in our university community or who in our broader community have made a significant contribution. And it is the event when we thank all those who have supported you, our graduates, family and friends, many of whom are with you here today. And it is when we express our appreciation to all members of the McEwen community for their efforts on behalf of our university and especially on behalf of you, our students. Simply put, it is the institution's most important celebration, indeed, its most important day. When we set aside the 
day-to-day challenges to recommit to our core ambition to be the very best at what we do. Yesterday, we had the opportunity to recognize the contributions of John Day, our outgoing uh, chair of the Board of Governors. It behooves me at this ceremony to also recognize his many contributions, his commitment and his energy, his understanding of the university have really been unprecedented. So on behalf of all of us here in this convocation ceremony and everyone in the university, John, thank you very much for everything. Notwithstanding uh, the trials and traumas of history, the university has remained a dominant and a potent institution that even after a thousand years enjoys a pride of place in our community. And as a new university, McEwen is really just now finding its place in this remarkable history. And while we might not be Paris or Oxford or Harvard, we share in the same aspirations for our students, and especially today for you, our graduates. You are part of this historic continuity. Universities began as teaching institutions where our collective culture and value and traditions were protected and cultivated and passed on from one generation to another. And it is this role that today most people identify with universities. Only in the 19th century did universities become institutions committed to research and innovation, creative activity, and this has over time become an ever more dominant role for the modern university. But these two things are clearly integrated. Research informs our teaching, the assumption being that you, our students, are entitled to what is new and creative and cutting edge. And equally, the questions that you ask in class inspire our faculty to find answers and explanations. And finally, all of us, faculty and students alike, we're all connected in the act of learning. But it remains that today universities are so much more and that the demands that are placed on them are ever increasing. Never in history has so much been known and available to be known as today. A click away on Google. The challenge to master this information and to use it for the general good is increasingly the primary goal of a university, suffusing and influencing everything we do both inside and outside the classroom. Now, we at McEwen aspire to provide you, our graduates, with an education that we hope leads to a good job, and one that allows each of you to live what we hope is a good life. But we must also assert our role as an institution committed to the social good. We must work to make the world a better place. We do this, of course, in what we teach and in what we research. But McEwen and you, every one of our graduates, must embody and express in your actions this responsibility. It is this with which we specifically charge you. Attending university constitutes an enormous privilege. And with privilege comes responsibility to give back to return to society what it has given you, to ultimately help shape society, and I dare say, the world at large. We should take pride in what McEwen represents and how it puts its students first, recognizing as it does that you are the true agents of social change. We must as well celebrate those things that are so fundamental to who we are. Our implicit commitment to the values of our namesake, Dr. Grant McEwen, who exhorted us to make the world a better place than we found it. 
We must celebrate our university's broad commitment to sustainability and the general recognition that we must, in everything we do, put the health of our planet first. We must take pause in our recent commitment to implement the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We must recognize our leading role in heightening awareness of sexual harassment and our commitment to being an inclusive community that welcomes all and provides a supportive place for everyone to learn. But more than this, we take pride in how the McEwen community, in examples big and small, expresses these values. We can, of course, talk of the opening of our residences recently to evacuees from Fort McMurray, and the efforts faculty, staff, and students made to feel that, make them feel welcome in what was surely one of the worst moments of their lives. Like so many others in Alberta, McEwen stepped up because it was the right thing to do. We can talk, too, about those who work to help, those in situations of need and deprivation, of how our faculty and staff and students spontaneously came together in response to the Syrian refugee crisis. Or we can talk about our student union and its own long-standing program to support refugee students and to bring them to McEwen. There is the 27-year history of McEwen's Ukrainian Research Development Institute, who has which has done so much to support the development of nursing and inclusive education and democratic reform in Ukraine. Our students constantly volunteer in the community, and we should reflect with special pride on their efforts, whether it be our McEwen ambassadors, McEwen clubs, or our own McEwen athletic teams. Project HOPE, which stands for Hands Open to People Everywhere, began as a McEwen student initiative and is now its own not-for-profit, which raises money and sends students to work in projects in Latin America. Now, while we celebrate our successes, there remains much to do. The university must continue to pursue its efforts with respect to indigenous peoples, and it is appropriate that we stress this priority at today's convocation, held as it is during National Aboriginal Week. Similarly, while the institution has done much to be environmentally sensitive and to produce a sustainable campus, and it, ne it needs and must do more in what is surely the most significant challenge of our generation. Universities for many years have existed behind cloistered walls, the assumption being that they were protected from the negative influences of the outside world. This has all changed, and we must ourselves see ourselves as agents for change. This is the task which McEwen sets for you, our graduates, hoping as we do that you leave McEwen with a heightened commitment to the social good. Now today, we recognize students graduating from the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications. The Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications is our smallest faculty, but I always say it certainly punches above its weight. You can all agree with me. So many of our problems today are driven by poor communication, by a cynical shaping of the truth, and by a disregard of the power of communication to make the world a better place. If we just simply reflect on what is happening in the world today, there is so much to suggest that there is so much wrong that good communication could solve. And so, to you, our graduates in communication, journalism, you need to remember this. And we ask that you commit yourself to truth and to honesty in what you say and what you write, because your influence is extraordinary. Now, I must confess to having a soft spot for the arts. Perhaps because I am someone who, like so many others, 
might have, with a bit more talent, have taken a different direction in life. As I always said of my own musical ambitions, my ambition clearly exceeded my talent. But what you need to remember is that art is the most incisive expression of who we are. And so it must, be, it must remain at the core of how we define ourselves. Painting, design, music, they're not only entertainments. They are a fundamental expression of our world, of who we are, and how we might bring joy into it. So today, we might remember President John F. Kennedy's observation that what we seek to advance, what we seek to develop in all of our colleges and universities are educated men and women who can bear the burdens of responsible citizenship, who can make judgments about life as it is and as it must be. This is the highest ambition. But having said this, today is a day of celebration. And so I exhort you to stop with family and friends to celebrate what you have achieved. We ask that you remain part of the McEwen community through our Alumni Association, and we wish you well for the future, because after all, your success is our success. And we ask you that you commit, that you commit to taking what you have learned to improving the world in which you live. There is so much that depends on it. We're enormously proud of what you have achieved. Congratulations, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, President Atkinson. I would like to now call upon Brittany, Pr Pr sorry, Brittany Ann Petuniak, alumni representative, to introduce the recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award. David Cormican has made many notable contributions on screen, both big and small. As partner and executive vice president of business development and production for Don Cormody Television, or DCTV, David co-produced the 2014 Rogers Netflix original series, Between, the first new Netflix original series launched in Canada. David's producer credits for DCTV also include Shadowhunters, a second season of Between, the Emmy-nominated The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe, and Tokyo Trial, an upcoming miniseries. David's filmmaking accomplishments include the Christian Slater thriller, Stranded, The Tall Men featuring Jessica Biel, 13 Eerie, and Faces in the Crowd. In 2008, David founded the Canadian Short Screenplay Competition, which he ran until 2012. During that time, he produced five winning short film scripts. Rusted Pierre premiered at the 2011 Festival de Cannes, and Will won the Golden Sheaf for Best Drama at the 2013 Yorkton Film Festival. After being selected for playbacks 10 to watch in 2012, David was named one of the magazine's 2015's new establishment recipients in an annual feature highlighting great mid-career successes. David was also part of the Hollywood Reporter's Next Generation Canada 2014, and he received the National Screen Institute's Producer Drama Prize in 2010. I am honored today to present David Cormican with the Distinguished Alumni Award on behalf of McEwen University alumni. Congratulations, David. Chair Day, President Atkinson, University Administrator, Faculty, graduates of McEwen University, Class of 2016, it's an honor to join you here today. 
Allow me to start by saying, given Dos Equis recent decision to send their retiring brand ambassador to Mars, I'd like this speech to officially serve as my kickoff in my campaign to become the new most interesting man in the world. <laughs> because I knew this beard would come in handy one of these days. All kidding aside, it's really good to be home here in Alberta. I had the great fortune of meeting Damon Lindelof last week over dinner in Banff. Damon, for those of you who don't know, is the creator of ABC's mega hit Lost. He's also the showrunner of HBO's The Leftovers. Basically, he's the person we get to thank for some of the best television known in this planet. And of course, who can forget the polar bear? Now on this particular night, Damon told us this lovely story about a time when he was watching Looney Tunes, Roadrunner, and Coyote with his family. I realize this uh, reference may predate some of you, <laughs> so I will give you a little backstory. The Roadrunner and Coyote is a series of cartoons in which Wile E. Coyote uses all sorts of absurdly complex contraptions acquired from the Acme Corporation in a wonderfully elaborate and entirely genius pursuit of a singular goal, catch and eat the Roadrunner. And whether he used his rocket power roller skates, heaps of dynamite, earthquake pills, heat-seeking missiles, an anvil, or even a giant mousetrap, the coyote just couldn't ever seem quite to catch a break, and the roadrunner was always just outside of his grasp. Coyote would usually end up burnt to a crisp, squashed flat, at the bottom of a canyon or run over by an oncoming train, or the Acme delivery truck, or sometimes a combination of all of these. And even when the Acme Corp devices did work, they were usually always to the detriment of Coyote. So why, with all his genius and cunning, his potential, all these tools and remarkable technology at his fingertips, was the Coyote always dealing with failure? You can probably guess it, even if you aren't familiar with the cartoon itself, but he pursued his goal alone. Like many of you, as a bold young graduate, I was fairly certain that I was destined for an extraordinary life and greatness of some kind. But I quickly realized I wouldn't be able to do it by myself. I also knew that to be great and to do great, I would have to surround myself with greatness, with people who are doing extraordinary things. In addition, I would need support and guidance as well as grounded perspective rooted in experience. I quickly realized that the principle of community my community, which Wiley e. Coyote overlooked, would be essential in pursuing my goals and my success. But how do you find these people, the ones who are doing these extraordinary things, and the ones who keep you motivated but remind you to stay humble and hungry? How do you find or create your communities? Several years ago, I had a chance run-in with a stranger that resulted in some incredible advice. He said, when everyone's running for the hills, look behind you and them toward the valley and consider that direction. For it's usually in those places where others fear to tread that you'll often find the greatest of opportunities. Now this always holds true unless of course it's a zombie apocalypse in which case run faster than everyone else. I don't care what advice you've got. <laughs> but that advice has stuck with me and it motivates me every day as I continue to build my career in the film and TV business. Run into the places that seem scariest. Run into the places where everyone else isn't. For my part, you might not believe this, but I ran headlong into Saskatchewan, which everyone told me I was crazy to do, to leave the comforts and the excitement of Hollywood North in Toronto. Now up until that point, I had the good fortune of living my post-McEwen years in major urban centres like Edmonton, I spent time in Dublin, Toronto and New York. But it was in Regina where I found a foothold in the film and TV business of all the places I know. But while I was there, I began participating in three great communities. I was elected to the SAS Culture Board of Directors where I oversaw the creative industries portfolio at the age of 26. I was also elected to the Regina Downtown Business Improvement District's Board of Directors where I served as its youngest sitting board member. I was sought out for my experience in the arts and was intricately involved in the drafting of Regina's 25-year master plan. And it was around this time that I was also elected as Saskatchewan's representative to the Canadian Media Producers Association a board on which I'm proud to continue to serve and sit on to this day. My youth and vibrancy and my experience in the arts made me an asset to these communities. And my willingness to engage opened up a world of opportunities to me. Now fast forward a few years later, and I'm now living in Toronto with my daughter, who reminds me constantly 
that my community is continuously evolving and that nine-year-old girls have a very unique perspective on the world. I've co-founded one of Canada's fastest growing content production companies, Don Carmody Television. In our first two years, as Brittany mentioned, we've produced four television series, including the Emmy-nominated The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe, and Netflix's first original series in Canada, Between, which will also be having its premiere of the second season next week. And I couldn't have made it here without taking chances as I built my communities. Yes, communities are built one person at a time, but each successful community you participate in has the potential to give rise to other successful communities that, in the end, provide you with a series of opportunities that, if leveraged smartly, can help lead you to achieving greatness and catching your roadrunner, however you choose to define it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I sit on the board of the Canadian Media Producers Association. Being a part of that community has helped me learn about the content creation business beyond the scope of the classroom or the confines of working at any one company. Because in that community, believe it or not, competitors willingly share their experiences and work together to promote the greater good of our sector from coast to coast to coast. And in that community, our sometimes disparate perspectives enable us to consider our challenges from all angles. We develop better, more balanced solutions than if we were all coming to the table and laying down the same cards. Community doesn't necessarily mean sameness. For example, it was at about this time I met a new member of my community, one of my most influential mentors, John Barrick. John and I found that we share a similar business vision, but we each operate to great effect by tapping into very different skill sets. Having a partner who complements your abilities and experiences is great, but having two is even better. So after much discussion, we approached a man who offered yet another unique set of talents in the industry, Don Carmody, who is arguably one of Canada's most successful film producers and is often compared to that of Harvey Weinstein. And we convinced Don that the three of us working together could offer something truly distinctive. Suddenly, we were a community of three. And not long after this, Michael McGowan, a writer and director who wanted to make the move from making feature films into television, came to us with a great idea for a series. So our community of three partnered with Mike to start the evolution of what is now known as Between. City TV joined us next, and our show and community was finally taking flight. We then partnered with a leading Canadian distribution company who had a close and existing relationship with Netflix. And now our community was growing to international levels. Our partners at Netflix had a working relationship with someone who you guys might be familiar with. This might be a reference you'll get, Jeanette McCurdy. And Jeanette was looking to make the leap into more dramatic waters after making her mark with Nickelodeon. And when Jeanette joined our community, so did an epic number of her social media followers. As Between grew, we added writers, directors, performers, technicians, marketing and promotional staff, all sorts of people to our community. We created an out-of-the-park success both here in Canada and around the world now through Netflix's 80 million plus subscribers. Sometimes, like we did, and I say the word we, when we establish DCTV, you'll be starting communities. Sometimes, as when I got involved with the CMPA, you'll be joining them. And sometimes, like when we watch our show's popularity grow all over the world via social media, you just might appreciate the fruits of another community's labor. Each time you say yes to starting or being involved in a community, you'll be both giving and receiving, and in doing so, you'll not only be growing, you'll be paving the way to your own and others' success. The whole, the community, your community, really is greater than the sum of the parts. And it's always a reciprocal relationship. You get out what you put in. So be wise about your relationships. Be mindful of how you function within your communities. You can't expect everyone to root for you if you don't do a little rooting of your own in return. It's not as simple as saying many hands make light work. Because to be successful, you will have to work hard and smart, but working hard and playing smart with others, whether it's a path you start or one you join, means that your likelihood of success is far greater than that of our lonely coyote. When I sat where you are sitting now, it was 15 years ago when I was pretty nervous. We called it Y2K, and everyone thought that the world was coming to an end, when in reality, mine was just blasting off. And this place, well, actually a couple blocks over, was still known as Grant McEwen Community College. 
Now, I know this sounds cheeky, but touch wood, things seem to be working out pretty good for me. In fact, I know they're working out really well because my parents, who are sitting right over there, have stopped asking me to get a teacher's certificate in case this entertainment thing doesn't work out. <laughs> Thank you. So here we are. It's 2016. I've grown from graduate to successful entrepreneur, producer, father, and most interesting man in the world hopeful. <laughs> and this institution has transformed from a community college into a world-class university, which you are now a part of. However, the spirit of the word community still lives on strong and proud at McEwen. This spirit, along with your knowledge, relationships, and more than likely some debt, sorry parents, <laughs> but it's true, is what you will take with you when you leave this place. Hold on to it. Respect its origins. Consider where you've come from as carefully as where you're going to next. Understand that to thrive, to create impact, communities must evolve, and so too will and must you. Be bold. Get in front of people and ask questions, but listen hard to their answers. You're not a coyote on a solo mission. You are expanding your tribe. Create communities of support. Include those who challenge you, who compete with you, and expect the best of you in everything that you do. The mark you leave on the world will be better for it, and therein lies your adventure and your continued success, and therein lies your roadrunner. So give it your all. Be great. Surround yourself with greatness in all that you do, in life, in love, in career, in all your relationships. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And congratulations, McEwen University class and community of 2016. Thank you, Mr. Carmican, for offering this afternoon's graduates your animated, engaging, and authentic message highlighting the value of communities. Well done. And now I would like to invite Dr. Corlett, along with the Academic Governance Council's Vice Chair, Mr. Chris Hancock, to their respective podiums for the presentation of graduates and for the conferring of credentials. Graduates, if you are able, please rise. On behalf of the faculties and schools of McEwen University, I present these graduates and those named in the convocation program who are not able to be with us today. I ask that they be pledged and admitted to the McEwen University degrees, applied degrees, diplomas, and certificates which they have earned. Thank you. Well, graduates, I'm going to ask you now that you would join in the McEwen University pledge. And I'm going to say the pledge, and you're going to respond in your most enthusiastic outdoor voice. So this pledge isn't an oath, but it's an expression of purpose, and I would expect you would respond with, I will. So here's the question. Will you pledge yourself to use the knowledge, experience, and skills that you have gained at McEwen University to serve your community and the world faithfully? Excellent. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the province of Alberta and upon the recommendation of McEwen University Academic Governance Council, I admit to you the degree, diploma, applied degree, or certificate to which you are entitled and invest in you all the rights and privileges, powers, and responsibilities pertaining to that credential. 
Now I bestow upon you this credential as a solemn trust to transform, engage, and improve the world from this day forth to teach and to learn from others so that through your learning, we can all flourish. Thank you. You can be seated. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Dr. Corlett and Mr. Hancock. I would like to now invite Mr. Raymond Burry, Assistant Professor of Music, to say a few words. In honor of our first graduating classes of the Bachelor of Communication Studies and the Bachelor of Music in Jazz and Contemporary Popular Music in the spring of 2015, a competition was held and two pieces were written by music students and were selected to celebrate this milestone. These compositions were intended to be a lasting legacy and played from that day forward at every convocation. The first piece is by Andrew Reed. It's called Memories. And the second is called Nothing Can Stop Us, written by Sean Bessie, which you'll hear at the recession of today's convocation ceremony. I encourage you to follow along with the lyrics for Memories on page nine of your program.
Thank you, Mr. Bury and McEwen University Big Band, and to the students who created this lasting legacy for our universities. And now, I would ask our marshals to begin ushering graduates to the stage. The McEwen University Big Band will play as graduates are being assembled. So well, those icy fingers up and down my spine. The same old witchcraft when your eyes be mine. The same old tingle that I feel inside. And when that elevator starts its ride, and down and down I go, around and round I go like a leaf. That's caught in the tide I should stay awake But what can I do? I hear your name And I'm a flame A flame With such a burning desire That only a kiss Can put out the fire For you're the love I have Waited for I'm on that old black magic called the We will now commence with the individual presentation of our graduates. We would like to remind you that if you wish to take photos of your graduate, please come to the area to the right of the stage as we approach your graduate's name on the program. An usher will assist you to ensure the smooth flow of people in and out of this area. With the exception of those taking photos, we ask that you remain seated during the presentation out of respect for all graduates and their families. 
offering congratulations to each graduate, our Board Chair Day, Mr. Hancock, Dr. Corlett, and the Faculty's Dean. Dr. Atkinson will present each graduate with their credential on stage. He will be assisted by Associate Registrars Mr. Tony Norad and Ms. Michelle Fraser. Off stage to your right is Brittany Petruniak, alumnus of McCune University. Ms. Petruniak will present each graduate with a gift on behalf of McEwen University alumni. I would ask the graduates to return to their seats after receiving their credentials. And now, I call upon Dean Denise Roy, Faculty of Arts and Fine Arts and Communications, to present graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the following articulate, creative, bold, and totally awesome candidates for certificate, diploma, and degrees within the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications. And now presenting graduates receiving the Bachelor of Communication Studies. Aaron Patrick Allen with distinction. Jenna Lisa Altrogi with distinction. Anthony Sharif Bacchus. Philip Donald Beaton. Nicole Kristen Bertram. Morgan Rianne Black with distinction. Christina Ann Bounds with distinction. Aiden Nicholas Brass. Connor Donald Casero. Christopher Arthur Dyer. Elise Marie Simone Fescha. Lauren Kathleen Fink. Shailene Venice Flanagan. Paul Adam Gazzola. Anastasia Francis Goddard. Sarah Ann Catherine Hamill.
Carrie Ann Hart. Alina Janelle Helmer with distinction. <laughs> Megan Heather Huell. Lindsay Ann Hides. <laughs> Alai Onasoya Idikio. Tamana Kurana. <laughs> Emily Joanne Killen with distinction. Cassandra Ann Kitts. <laughs> Spencer Rylan Knight. Alyssa Ann Cano. <laughs> Kyla Jeanette Lane. <laughs> Kelsey Angelica Ledenyak. Ryan Russell McIntyre. <laughs> Kelton Carissa Marshall. Celia Ivy McGann. <laughs> Scott Gordon Meberg. <laughs> Morgan Ruth Messeling. Kyle Walter Musica. <laughs> Yara Nasi. <laughs> Brittany Marin Nelson.
Russell Allen Olson. Kyle Gary Pierce. Diego Andres Romero. Chloe Christina Sabarin. Sahar Saifi. Jesse Elizabeth Savage. Davis Gerald C. Amanda Blair Seymour Skinner. Jillian Diane Slikanich. <laughs> Kaylin Danielle Small with distinction. <laughs> Devon Nicole Smith. Luke Graham Smith. <laughs> Leslie Ann St. Jean. Aaron Michelle Wiley Lastly. And now presenting graduates, receiving the Bachelor of Music in Jazz and Contemporary Popular Music. Danielle Marie Abel with distinction. Robert James Aidy with distinction. Robert Graham Allen Bapp. <laughs> Lucas Gregory Donald Brown. <laughs> Kevin Mitchell Castro. Andrew Ronald Creswick. <laughs> Rebecca Lynn Forbes with distinction. <laughs> Matthew Kyle Graham.
Mia Louise Haddad. Drew Garrett Hoopka with distinction. Marissa Louise Karpiak. Yinan <laughs> Lee with distinction. Brendan Curtis Lyons with distinction. Andrew Thomas Menzak. David Alexander Pollock. Brett Patrick Reed. <laughs> Zachary Daniel Robertson. Diane Sutton. Ben Alexander Tassell. Johnny Lynn Tolman with distinction. <laughs> Ethan Francis Tona with distinction. Matthew Randall Tall. <laughs> Kyle Patrick Walden. Jordan White. <laughs> Roya Yazdan Mayor with distinction. <laughs> and lastly, Tatiana Zagora. And now, presenting graduates receiving the Arts and Cultural Management Certificate. Ayla Karina Holanemo. <laughs> Megan Anise Starcha. Atagan Jumagulov. <laughs> Lastly. 
and now presenting graduates receiving the Arts and Cultural Management Diploma. Brittany Devon Chirwenia. <clears throat> Meredith Eileen Leary with distinction. Esther Elizabeth Malzahn with distinction. And lastly, Molly Gisela Staley. And now presenting graduates, receiving the Design Studies Diploma. Laura Bassam Almadine. Desiree Jamie Billy. Danielle Kathleen Binden. Rachel Lauren Bugstrucker. Ayuneso A. Castillo. Mary Christine Douglas. <clears throat> Vanessa Adele Frederick. <clears throat> Erica Nathalie Guevara Aguara. Amy Grace Kennedy. Danielle Lauren Kinley. Claudia Matus. Emily Jennifer McDonald. Brenna McKenzie. <clears throat> Alicia Carmel Palmar. <clears throat> Deanna Jean Payne. Samantha Scharf. <laughs> Shayna Megan Melissa Shan.
Jesse Lee Stewart. Morgan McLean Stobie with distinction. Lilia Yue Wan. Donovan Wong with distinction. Jelena Wen Yi Wong. Michaela Elizabeth Jane Yaseko, lastly. And now presenting graduates receiving the Fine Arts Diploma. Brenna Victoria Kappas. Natalie Marie Cloutier. Justin Rainier Cuevas. <laughs> Fallon Gwyneth Doherty. Gonzalo de Jesus Fokin. <laughs> Stacy Emiko Kingsley Sorkin. <laughs> Elisha Michaela Cordiba. Leah Monique Lawton. C. Nansul Lee. Cheyenne Rain Legrand. Vadislava Monokova. James Peach. Daniel Joseph Pickering. Caitlin Nicole Pillipa. Beatrice Anna Kehano Flaman. <laughs> Kelsey Alisa Vaughn.
Mackenzie Faith Whittington with distinction. <laughs> Lastly, and now presenting graduates receiving the music diploma. Samantha Claire Bachman. <laughs> Lindsay Taylor Baker. J.D. Emma Elizabeth Bauer with distinction. <laughs> Sean Patrick Bumstead with distinction. Owen Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> Yana Ialoha Lu. Curtis Glenn Mokri with distinction. <laughs> Ashton Taylor Poon. John Douglas Michael Spielman. Andy Lam Tai. <laughs> Haley Ray Tomich. Robert William Townsend, lastly. And now, presenting graduates receiving the Theater Arts Diploma. Nelson Alexander Bragg. Matthew Thomas Derwarith. Ariel Isabel Diaz. <laughs> Michelle Apostol Diaz. Morgan Alexandra Donald. Adam Paul Houston.
Janelle Allison Jordy. <laughs> Natasha Lynn Mason. <laughs> Hannah Memory Myers. Tanya Irina Paholik. <laughs> Zachary Eamon Peterson. <laughs> Jordan Dane Poirier. Nicholas Rose. Everett Gordon Sokol. And lastly, Caitlin Maria Tazer. And now, presenting graduates receiving the Theatre Production Diploma. Lewis Gordon McCallum. Nicole Kelly Aaron O'Brien. Brooke Ashley Peden. Gabrielle Yvette Marie Faneuf. Emily Faith Randall. Sarah Teresa Shillington. Levin Barnabas Tam. Elisa Margarita Urquia, lastly. I present to you those graduates from the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications unable to be present whose names are listed in the program. Thank you, Dean Roy. This concludes the presentation of our graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in a round of applause acknowledging our graduating class of 2016!
That was the first half toss of this round of convocation ceremonies. It's true, it's true. The presentation of student awards will begin with the Dean's Medal for Academic Excellence for the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications. I invite Dean Roy to present this award. Within each faculty and school at McCune University, we recognize the students whose academic efforts have propelled them to the top of their class. The Dean's Medals are the highest academic honor that may be granted in a faculty, and it recognizes the exemplary success of individual students within their area of study. One award may be granted in a certificate or diploma program, and one award in a degree program. This year's Dean's Medal for Academic Excellence in a Certificate or Diploma Program for the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications is awarded to Meredith Eileen Leary, a graduate of Arts and Cultural Management. Needless to say, Meredith is a devoted student whose area of interest currently focuses on the museum's and heritage sector. Aside from her performance as an excellent student, Meredith is also involved herself in other enrichment activities during her studies at McEwen, including leading a student-led study trip to Ottawa to visit and speak with administrators of some of Canada's leading national museums. Devoted to lifelong learning, she has also just completed the Alberta Museums Association Museum Studies Program and is just a few credits away from achieving her bachelor's degree from the University of Alberta. Meredith is currently working at the Alberta Museums Association as operations coordinator in charge of the membership portfolio. Please join me in recognizing Meredith for attaining a perfect GPA of 4.0. <laughs> I'm scared of how smart some of these students are. <laughs> this year's Dean's Medal for Academic Excellence in a Degree Program for the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications is awarded to Jenna Lisa Altrogi, a graduate of the Bachelor of Communication Studies Program. During her four years in the Bachelor of Communication Studies degree, Jenna consistently excelled in her studies, achieving a GPA of 3.944. Not only did she excel in her major of professional communication, but when she studied music, sociology, psychology, and biology, it was evident that she possessed outstanding academic skills in these other disciplines as well. In addition to her dedicated focus on academic achievement, Jenna was a member of the Golden Key International Honor Society, an academic society which recognizes and encourages scholastic achievement and excellence among university students. As well, Jenna's interests include movies, traveling, and writing, all of which support her focus in communications. What is also remarkable about Jenna is her dedication to humanity and community. Currently, she is a communications assistant for the Mustard Seed, an organization dedicated to supporting those who are in need. Congratulations to Jenna for her outstanding academic accomplishments and her dedication to the Edmonton community.
Thank you, Dean Roy. And congratulations once again. And a round of applause for our student award winners. Dr. Corlett, would you please present the Distinguished Teaching Awards? A pleasure. Ray Bree, will you join me at the podium, please? The writer W.H. Auden once said that a professor is someone who talks in somebody else's sleep. <laughs> that one always takes a while to catch on. Not here, not at McEwen. The mission of McEwen University is to provide an unparalleled undergraduate education. And our faculty dedicate themselves to their students in a way that is frankly all too rare in the modern post-secondary education system. Teaching excellence is everywhere to be found at McEwen. And yet each year, even in an environment suffused with outstanding teachers, there are professors who according to their students, and to their faculty peers rise above even the high standard that we have long set. Recipients of a Distinguished Teaching Award connect with, engage, and inspire students in the learning process, create a positive learning environment, use innovative teaching techniques and methods, and model professional attitudes and values. Among this year's four winners of a Distinguished Teaching Award is Ray Bree of the Department of Music and our Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications. Ray has been and continues to be a constant and outstanding presence in the Edmonton music scene as a player and educator. The Tommy Banks Big Band, the Edmonton Jazz Orchestra, the new Edmonton Wind Sinfonia. Uh, as a personal aside, in the space of just a few weeks this past year, I attended Romeo and Juliet at the Alberta Ballet and West Side Story at the Citadel the tenor sax player in both of those bands, Ray Barry. No one knows more about being an entrepreneur than the artists in this room today. Um, he's also been a winner of multiple awards for both teaching and band direction over many, many years. And today, of course, he is the leader, as he has been for a long time, of the McEwen Big Band, whose class and sophistication and superb musical professionalism like that of its leader, is like nothing else that you will see in a convocation anywhere, one that resonates with the joy of music like we have the privilege of hearing each and every session. I would like you to uh, join me in congratulating Ray Barry on his outstanding contribution to music education, to student learning, and to making McEwen University a very special place for undergraduate study. Wait, there is more. This is a good year for the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communications. Also, among this year's four winners of a Distinguished Teaching Award is Professor Constanza Patcher from the Department of Art and Design in the Faculty of Fine Arts and Communication. Now, I need your help. Uh, Professor Patcher is not able to be with us today. She is in her native Argentina, but through the magic of online streaming, she may be watching. So on the count of three, Hi Constanza, graduates please. Okay, one, two, three with a wave. Hi Constanza. Thank you very much. She is another winner of that award and she will appreciate that greeting from you. Thanks everybody. I would now like to ask Ms. Brittany Petruniak alumni representative to provide a welcome to you, our newest members of the McEwen University alumni family. 
Alrighty. Good afternoon, family, friends, and most importantly, graduates. Today, we celebrate years of your hard work that has brought you to this stage. Well, I know there were the days where you thought, how am I gonna get through this? You did. And you didn't just get through it. That day, semester, or that year, you succeeded. And you accomplished a goal and a dream. Moving forward from today, the late night studying and the 8 a.m. classes will all be forgotten. But your time spent making a difference in your life and in those around you will stay with you forever. The relationships you have built with new friends and the mentors are yours to keep as you move forward to your next chapter in life. You are part of a larger family now. You are joining a community that is making a difference in our city and in around the world. You are McEwen alumni. Wear this title proudly because you are different from other graduates. You have the distinct experience of building a culture and a city. You brought life to our community. It is because of your ambitions and drive to succeed that our city is changing. You have not just been a part of McEwen's legacy, you are the legacy. As you move on, know that your time at McEwen has prepared you to not just get by, but to truly live life. Know you have the knowledge to succeed in pursuing your dreams. McEwen alumni have the courage to pursue nothing short of excellence. And as you continue on your travels, don't forget to stay in touch. We want to hear about your success and where your journeys have taken you. After all, we're family. So in the spirit of Dr. J.W. Grant McEwen's mission of giving back, I would like to leave you with a few words from Albert Pine that have guided me through my time at McEwen and still do today. What we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for others and the world remains and is immortal. Congratulations, graduates. Today is for you. Thank you, Ms. Petruniak. This brings us to the closing moments of our ceremony, after which alumni and their families are invited to join us for a celebration in the foyer. At this time, I would like to invite all graduates to express their appreciation to the people who have supported them through their educational journey. And to help you with that, I would ask the faculty members to please rise, faculty rise. Graduates, a round of applause for the faculty. And graduates, helping you along in this journey are your family and friends. Family and friends, you might need to stretch anyway, so please rise. Please rise and help our graduates. Graduates, a round of applause for family and friends. And now, in turn, I would like to invite our audience, faculty, and staff to join me in congratulating our graduating class of 2016! Board Chair Day, I would like to invite you to close convocation. Thank you, Mike. Well, congratulations to each of our graduates. We know this is a special day 
and we encourage each of you to celebrate its importance with your family and friends. Allow me to express on behalf of everyone here the appreciation to all the McCune, McCune University volunteers who helped to make today such a great success. Well done. All of us at McEwen University are exceedingly proud of the achievements of each and every one of our graduates. I think we would all agree that this has been an event to remember. I now ask that everyone please stand and remain standing during the playing of our legacy recessional composed by Sean Bessie and kindly wait until the graduates have left the performance chamber before you exit. Mace Bearer, University Registrar, will you please lead the recessional? I now hereby declare this convocation closed.